the Pennsylvania Senate. Two pretty major developments here. Number one, first and foremost, we'll start with the Republicans, which is that David McCormick has conceded, let's put this up there on the screen, to Dr. Oz in the Pennsylvania GOP Senate primary, which means that the hedge funder, David McCormick, Mr. MAGA, as he styled himself, <laughs> will not be the GOP nominee. And that heart surgeon, uh, heart throb, as some people call him, Dr. Really? Dr. Mehmet Oz, <laughs> will be the GOP nominee for Senate there. Uh, it's actually very interesting here because they were in the middle of the recount. However, David McCormick came out and said this in a statement, quote, it is now clear to me with the recount largely complete that we have a nominee. And today I called Mehmet Oz to congratulate him on his victory. So this means that the official uh, nominees are set. It is gonna be Dr. Oz versus John Fetterman. We'll get to John Fetterman and some of his own heart problems here in a second, but I do think it is worth just going a little bit and looking at the official count. Oz is officially now gonna beat Mike McCormick by just 972 votes in this primary out of 1.34 million votes that were counted in the May 17th primary. That's insane in terms of just how close yeah. things got here. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, Crystal, for your view, I don't know how this is gonna work in the general election, which is that because I think Republicans it's very clear here, they didn't 100% trust Dr. Oz. His celebrity status wasn't enough in order to overcome the attacks on him as being some sort of closet liberal with all the same views that Donald Trump once held, very interestingly enough. But what happens is that now, given that GOP enthusiasm is so high, yeah. I don't think it's gonna matter. The fact that he had difficulty, let's be honest here, winning the primary, yeah. I don't think it's still gonna matter come election day against I John agree Fetterman. With you. I yeah. agree with you. I actually think in this instance, uh, which is certainly not always the case, Trump helped push forward the candidate who was more electable in the fall. Oh, absolutely. I, um, I think with, yeah. that Oz has a potential crossover appeal I think, you know, the things that hampered him in the primary, some previously sort of like, you know, liberal flirtations and mm -hmm. uh, those sorts of views, I think that ultimately helps him in the general election. I think the thing that Trump said about like, he's popular in particular with the women or That's something true, like that. That's true, by the way. That's <laughs> actually true. Could very yeah. much be the case. Yeah. And, you know, Americans love celebrities. I know that uh, the Fetterman team and Democrats will hit him with the fact, you know, that he has been living in a, a mansion overlooking Manhattan. They'll call him a carpetbagger and all of that stuff. But uh, I think he's a very formidable opponent and not just for the Senate, frankly. I mean, if he makes it through this uh, Senate race, and the odds have to be in his favor, just given uh, the landscape that Democrats are facing this year and how Pennsylvania is sort of the quintessential swing state mm -hmm. at this point. I think if he makes it through, sky's the limit for him in terms of his political potential. So Everyone thought we'll I would. We'll see yeah. how he handles himself on the trail, but you know that this is a man who knows how to play to the camera, knows how to answer a question. He managed probably the trickiest waters were him navigating through the Republican primary, and he managed to, to pull it off without saying anything that was like, too utterly ridiculous and you know just completely toxic for the general election. So yeah, I think he's an extremely formidable opponent for the Democrats in the fall. So the day he announced, a lot of people made fun of me because I tweeted about how I was quote, Ozpilled and how a household <laughs> named doctor challenging public health bureaucrats in a plain spoken way tied to a positive vision to escape the current chaos is going to be politically formidable. And I said, oh, you're a joke. Listen, I watched Donald Trump that changed my entire idea of what's possible in this country. Yeah. For And I completely agree with you. I think Dr. Oz could easily be president. He could be the uh, successor to Donald Trump. You know why? Because neither of them believe anything. And their ideological uh, malleability is a strength. I've watched him, you know, navigate. Those Stop the Steal ones were very adroit in those interviews. He would be like, look, we need to beef up our election security, all of this. He would never come out right and say that the election was stolen in the same way that David McCormick was shameless in enough to do it. Yeah, he play acts the whole gun thing. He, I've seen him too. Um, many of the most hot button of culture war issues, he always tries to find try, like an actual middle ground. And given the fact that he comes from the Hollywood world and now he's a GOP nominee, Trump had the exact same 
the exact same adroitness. I mean, I remember Trump being like, I'm the most pro-gay president of all time. He used to hang out with the gay pride flags, you know, mm-hmm. like LGBTQ right. yeah. squared for Trump. I remember that from 2016. The evangelicals didn't care. They supported him anyway. So Oz is exactly in the same way where you can split the difference. And I'm not saying, you know, if you care about those things, it's not necessarily a good thing. But in terms of getting out the vote in a pivotal swing state, you're a massive household name celebrity doctor who can't really be accused of being a radical on anything. I think the most potent attacks I'm reading about Fetterman on him is that he's an out of touch Hollywood liberal, which, you know, I mean, not untrue. Yeah. Has, apparently, our producer James is telling us he has the commercial of Oz kissing his star in Hollywood. His own Hollywood star. That's, I don't think it's going to matter because people ran good. the same thing against Trump. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that is. So the, the question is, Trump had this ability to, like, even though he's this wealthy billionaire living in Manhattan, mm-hmm. et cetera, he did have this ability to kind of feel out the pulse of your average American. Yes. And because he, this is the benefit of being an outsider, never having served in public office before. You don't know how many votes you have to answer for. You can be whatever you want to be for whatever audience at whatever yeah. point in time. And Oz, same thing. He has the ability to kind of shapeshift like that. And I think, you know, given his uh, success in media, clearly has the talent to be able to pull that off. Now, does he have that same ability to kind of have his finger on the pulse the way that Trump did after, you know, living for years in a sort of Manhattan or Hollywood elite circles? But I will say— you know, daytime television is pretty finger on the pulse. I was going to say exactly. So if you're going to be in media in one area and still mean your connectivity to the sentiments of the average American, daytime TV is a pretty pretty good slot to be in. I completely agree with you. People, you know, consider it, which is that, you know, HBO, all that other stuff, that's for elites. Not that many people in this country actually watch it, as good as their stuff is. Massive HBO fan. Uh, shout out to We Own This City and Euphoria. Now, that being said, though, the real... People who understand the pulse are Judge Judy, (laughs) The View, (laughs) Dr. Oz, Oprah. I mean, those are the people who really dialed into and created, you know, Judge Judy's worth like as much as Dr. Oz, like hundreds of millions of dollars. Oprah's a freaking billionaire. And she's the one, by the way, who made Dr. Oz. So my point is, is that they are very in touch in exactly the same way that Trump was in his ability to manipulate what I guess I would call is what lowbrow mass media. That's essentially like lowbrow mass media that appeals to the general public. And especially, remember this, Oz is famous exactly amongst the demographic who votes. Yeah, look, none of the people our age, we don't watch Dr. Oz. Boomers love Dr. Oz. A lot of those people came up on daytime TV and religiously watch it and have trusted him over the years. I was looking back at his Q score, which is kind of his, uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's a metric that advertisers and them look at for published consciousness. His Q score was sky high some 15 so odd years ago. Yeah, by yeah. the way, um, I mean, also worth noting, if he is elected, he will be the first Muslim senator. That's true. Um, some things that <laughs> Jelani breaking barriers. Was, was pointing out. Breaking, breaking barriers. barriers. Um, and uh, the other thing about daytime television is that there's actually a high minority yes. viewership as well. I mean, Trump, if he hadn't been so just like blatantly like nasty and xenophobic in his first campaign in particular, had even more of a chance to improve his standing with African Americans. He was a rap and, icon. Yeah, yeah. Ex- so weird. I mean, right. he he actually had the opportunity to do that and kind of screwed that up for himself. But um, I think Oz has potentially some of that crossover appeal as well. It's just going to be hard hard to paint him as someone who is like insane the way that say their Republican governor nominee right. in Pennsylvania, Mastriano, um, who's like at the fringe of and jumps on every conspiracy and was there on January 6th and wants to ban abortions altogether. It's going to be hard for people to see Oz through that sort of a, a radical lens. Completely agree. Um, so I, like I said, I think you know, there was some analysis that was like, oh, I think McCormick is the the hedge fund, like out of touch hedge fund bro is uh, right. a better candidate. I don't buy that whatsoever. I think yeah. Oz is a much more formidable candidate. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. 
That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.